Here are the options for studs that I have tried over the years. And they each have their strengths and their weaknesses. This is what I tried first, gold screws. Now this is when my son was little, I think he was six, and we started winter riding. This is what I started with on my bike, because they're cheap. You can throw them in any type of tire you want. And if all you're doing is pleasure riding and you just want to see if, if it's even worth it to get out in winter, I'd actually recommend starting with these. Don't try any tough hill climbs because these will rip out. They don't have the staying ability. Um, they're sharp enough that they work well on ice. And if you just want to get out and explore, man, fill your boots. On your front tire, these will last for a couple of seasons. Your back tire, honestly, you can rip them all out in one ride if you want if you're trying to do difficult hill climbs and if you're spinning your tire a lot. But if all you want to do is get out and explore and you're trying to do it on the cheap, give these a whirl. They actually work. Put as many in as you can. And when you're installing them on the tire, don't install them flat. Install them on an angle because where they get their grip is from the side of the screw. So you get more pounds per square inch if the corner is touching, not the flat screw. That's what I've learned from that. They are available in a couple of different lengths, so you can have a half inch to go in your front, five eighths to go in your back, and they work pretty well for that. However, on my last ride out, um, we actually did lose all of, all of the studs in the rear tire on my buddy's tire in a single ride with those. Now we get into the grip stud type of studs. So I do have some genuine grip studs. These are the fronts, so you can see that they are shallower and they have a nice big auger on them. I've never had one of these pull out. They've actually worked really well. And on your front tire, they'll last forever. If you, if you are like me and you got hobbies that are expensive and you're trying to make your dollars last, if you're going to cheap out anywhere, cheap out on your front because they'll last a long time. They're not under that much stress. Just don't cheap out on your rear. These are some off brands that I've tried. This is a Rooster, um, which is an off brand. Again, did not hold up well in the rear, but actually worked pretty decent in the front. In fact, I still have some on my son's bike. This is the type of stud that you would typically put in your rear tire. You're looking for a long projection on this, and you're looking for a carbide tip. This is a knockoff. This one is from Alibaba, and it looks identical to grip studs. I tried, when I, when I got it, I tried a genuine grip stud against this with a grinder, and they both seem to hold up the same. Where they differ is once you actually get out on the trail. The carbides come off, um, the studs will bend over, they're, they're just not worth your time because they are not going to last. The, uh, these guys get installed with the installation tool that you can get when you buy the, the actual grip studs. What I found works really well is to pump your tire up to like 40 PSI or 50 PSI, try and get your tire really solid and then lean into it. And these will go in fairly, fairly easily and they'll stay in. Uh, it's extremely rare to have one of these rip out because again, with the augers, it more depends on the type of tire you have as to how long they're gonna stay in there. I haven't had any come out on my AT81 I have had some come out on the M5B. Uh, and again, this is where you want to spend your money is on your rear tire, genuine grip studs, because the carbides last, you get way better traction. And you know, you're going to buy a tire, do it up once, and it may last, well, I think I'll get about four seasons out of mine. So at the end of the day, it's a cheaper option than trying to cheap out. You can go with shoot in type studs. And there are a variety of companies that uh, provide those. Some of them are quite reputable. For example, Ice Claw tires, they use a really, really good stud. The studs last really well. Um, and that's something that you can look at if you don't want to invest in uh, a stud gun yourself. You can buy pre made tires. <laughs> Here's the closest thing I can do for a side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see bikes almost identical. The one on the left, 2017 TX300. My son rides that. He started riding it when he was 14 at about 116 pounds. He's up to about 140 pounds now. He's 15. On the right is 2021 TX300. I ride that. I'm a lot more than 150 pounds. I'm about uh, one, 
well, I guess 200 with, with all in. So uh, pretty much identical bikes, very close to identical hours with the same trails. Now on the right hand side here, this is the 2021. I've got grip studs in this. So these are genuine grip studs purchased from Blackfoot Direct. And as I rotate the tire, you can see that by and large, these are in pretty good shape. This is the second season on both of these tires. So the tires have almost identical hours, identical wear, all that kind of stuff. And on the right hand side, the grip studs, you can see I haven't had to replace very many um, and they're in pretty darn good shape overall. Now let's go over to left hand side. These are not genuine grip studs. These are studs that I got off Alibaba and they were the highest rated studs that I could find. But as we rotate through, you're gonna see areas where studs are missing. You're going to see areas where I had to take out and put in additional studs. And we tend to lose, man, we lose maybe a dozen on every single ride. Um, I have not found that these bring value and this bike gets way, way, way less traction than my bike does. I feel that a lot when we're going out. So what I found is that while these studs were maybe, you know, under 75 cents each all in landed, they have ended up costing me more because you can see this tires ripping apart because I keep having to replace studs. Whereas this tire is still in fantastic shape. I probably get four seasons out of this guy. These studs are about $1.75 each purchased from Blackfoot Direct. So there's a direct side-by-side -side comparison studs. If I had it to do over again, I would never cheap out. I would go with the actual grip studs because what I found is that you spend the money once and you don't have to spend it again. Next, let's talk tire type. Tire on my bike is a GMX AT81 and I got it just because it was cheap and available. Um, and so that's what I ended up using. I'm actually really happy with this tire. It's not a designated winter tire like the Midas uh, winter friction or something like that is. But what I do like about it is as you rotate this around, you can see the studs are still standing up straight. I've never flipped this tire um, or anything like that. It's always been on in the same direction. And you can see that everything's holding up quite well. There are, I think, two lugs missing now as of this year. And uh, this year I'm doing much more difficult hill climbs with it as well. I'm trying to psych myself up for doing some more major races. Uh, and this tire's held up extremely well. This is the tire on my son's bike. This is uh, IRC M5B. I believe it's a softer tire. I don't know everything about tires. I'm not trying to be an expert, but here's what I do know. This tire, a lot of the studs are leaning on as we go around. It doesn't seem to have the strength to hold the studs up straight, uh, like even the AT81 does. So even the, though the AT81 isn't like a designated winter tire, it's not a terribly expensive tire, it does seem to have held up a lot better than the IRC M5B has. These are cold cutter screws, or similar to gold screws. And this is after, well, not even after a ride. This is about an hour and a half into our ride, single ride. We ended up on a hill that uh, took a little bit of doing to get up. But you can see we ended up with nothing left right down the middle of this tire, which made for a super interesting ride out about 14 kilometers or so through single track. So you can see that these studs are by far the least reliable. 